Oh, to all the girls I loved before. So is my mic on this time? <laughs> <laughs> am I am I good to go? Am I hot? And it is the uh, your fiddle faddle correctly tonight? Your your mic is on. Yep. I have fiddle faddled correctly. We are good to go. You are not hot. <laughs> That's horrible. <laughs> Two guys, one podcast. I'm one guy. No pinching, only punching. <laughs> I've been working on my nunchuck skills. Two guys, one podcast. And I'm the other. Yes. No, I'm not kidding you, but yes, there was. Content, content. Two guys, one podcast. I don't even remember what we were talking about, but I'm almost positive you're wrong. Two guys, one podcast. And this is the podcast. Big show, a really big show. Hey. I should probably stop eating candy while doing this. Oh, man. What? Yeah. Your lady friend? Do what? Your lady friend? Yeah. It's, she said, I feel like your dad and my dad are the same person. I said, uh-oh, what happened? She said, why Why ask me why I feel a certain way and then fight me tooth and nail on it because it's not your viewpoint and therefore telling me what I believe to be the past I'm supposed to be on are wrong because they don't fit in your idea of how life, love, and everything is supposed to work. I literally said, I can't have this conversation anymore. And walked out, and the whole time he's still talking. I told you, it's just about me. Yeah, but here's the thing, man. I'm not saying the dude doesn't have an argument. No, he's got a perfect argument. I'm just saying what he's using to support his argument is completely wrong. Yes. She she needs to not be with you because you're just a shit dude. <laughs> like, yeah, that's, that's a perfectly that's reasonable it. argument Done. for her father to make. He's like, uh, he's kind of a deadbeat and a loser. <laughs> and you, yeah. You could do much better. And and that's it. Done. <laughs> that's argument a good over. argument. That's a good argument. Now, look. Your daughter may still disagree with you, but, but you that's don't need to, a reasonable You don't need argument. to bring philosophy, morality, or spirituality into this at all. Not at all. <laughs> you just make a pure logic, <laughs> economical. <laughs> well, well, dear, here was your financial future before Joel. <laughs> Here's your financial future after one guy. <laughs> yeah. Um, welcome to Two Guys, One Podcast. I'm one guy. And I'm the other. And this is the podcast. So we were talking about... Freaky things. <laughs> In particular, this this cracked article is called Five Products That Improve the Love Lives of Creepy Sociopaths. Now, there's a bunch of them that are all pretty creepy, but I, the one in particular that you and I were both taken by was number four on their list. I don't understand how this isn't number one. I don't, I don't either. I'm probably butchering the pronunciation, but let's go with Anna Zhao Girls. Would you, do you approve of that? Sure. It's A-N-I-G-A-O space Girls. This is, okay, so we all know the Japanese are a weird lot. This is true. It's what happens when you are so uh, tightly packed, I think. I mean, that's a nation that's very full of people. They're piled on top of each other, very small landmass, lots of folks. They also have a very high-stress environment. One of the ways that they've dealt with that, apparently, is, is the, the birth of manga. You, you, I mean, you've watched manga in the past or anime, right? You've yeah, seen yeah, these. sure, okay. sure. The girls all look like they're about 17 years old, except they are, well, they look like they're 12, except they have the bodies of like 19 And their year eyes old. are as big as their hands. Yeah, gigantic fucking Hello Kitty eyes, whatever. This is a mask, a latex yeah. mask yeah. with a wig attached to it that fits over a girl's head. Or a guy's. Or a guy's head, one would imagine, yes, you're right, that looks like this manga character. It's a great gigantic eyed it's and this is this is not a co- this is a, it, it's not a halloween costume nope it is not that's not what it's for it's specifically they they are used there's this one brothel in particular that uses them there's call girls you can hire a hooker she will wear this mask so that you can screw a manga character you can screw sailor moon if that's you want fucked up man yeah that's weird man that's fucking cartoon characters is straight look I thought Cool World was as sexy as the next guy. Here's the thing, man. For them to for it to be like, oh, hey, send over a fucking Sailor Moon. Like, you're masturbating that cartoon to get aroused by it. Yeah, and then you've taken that further. Like, you're, I, I've got the real girl in here. I can't. I mean, here's the deal. Whatever happened to just plain old fantasy? Like, why can't you yeah, just Yeah, turn the ima- lights off and close your eyes. That's what I'm saying. Why can't you just what imagine I do. it? <laughs> no, I don't. No, I don't. No, I don't. Eh? That statement's going to get me a lot of trouble, and it's not true at all. It is not true. I never close my eyes. Ever. 
which makes my O face look ridiculous. Oh, yeah. it's very angry looking. I bet if your O face has is is open eyed. Yeah, but also surprised. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm, it's like I'm always surprised at what's about, what's happening to me. <laughs> this has never happened before. <laughs> That's fucking funny. Um, I, the rest of the article is pretty creepy too, but that's the one that's over the top. I I vote no to the cartoon masks for sex. Thanks. No, dude, I don't even get regular like leather masks. That's what I'm, I don't like. I don't understand. I mean, I can kind of get the idea. I can kind of get a blindfold. Like I can get that. Like taking one of the senses out of the equation or whatever. I can see why that can be uh, erotic or exciting. But like. Why not just a paper bag? I mean, at that point, like, yeah, what if, if I'm going to put a latex mask on you, like, I don't understand. Here's what, that can you imagine, saying, imagine the person in the mask? Um, I don't know how they're having sex, but I'm doing it vigorously. <laughs> that activity works up a sweat. I could not, I couldn't breathe in the mask. I would suffocate and just fall over. Yeah, well, it, I mean, and not only that, but like. You'd have like the wheeze of the of the air coming in and out from under the mask yeah. or whatever, right? But, but then also like it couldn't fit on the head perfectly tightly, so like it like it would slap a little bit. With uh, and here's the thing: is you said like the, a brothel uses it, right? It's nasty. Yeah. Do they wipe them out before the next girl gets well, it? Um, you, you, I'm assuming that the masks are probably like they come with the girl. Like the girl has a few masks that belong to her, and then it's her job to clean those. I'm assuming, because that's the other thing. You're going to assume if a dude wants to screw the chick wearing the mask, he's probably going to want to do something on the mask. Yeah, the yeah. Swallow this. Yeah. That's, ugh. Boo. Boo in general yeah, to yeah, the it's... Japanese. I hate to slander the, the name of an entire country like this, but you know what? We don't that's have a any their listeners. problem. We don't have any listeners in Japan anyway, so fuck them. That's a, that's a them problem. <laughs> Indeed. Indeed. One of the other articles that you sent me this week, and, and it, there were some really good ones. Actually, this one didn't come from you. I found this one all on my own. See, that's what happens when you try to put your tongue in my asshole. <laughs> I pull it out, and I, and I lick my own ass. Yep. Um, we went blue early on the show. <laughs> What's up with that? <laughs> I have a little bit of an obs- I have cable again at my house. I know. It's really good. You feel how American do you feel I, right now? I do feel very connected to the public zeitgeist, to the pop culture zeitgeist. You know, I'm I'm right there in the thick of it. I feel like uh, no place more so than Storage Wars. Oh, that's I fucking love this show. It, and here's the thing: is I watch a lot of shit like that. <laughs> you like you I watch love it all. Pawn Stars, American I like Auction Pickers, Kings. I watch Restoration. Yeah, I watch all that shit. Yeah, I'm surprised that it's a show that you watch i don't like any of the rest of them i don't like any of the rest of them i do not watch reality television i mean at all except that today it's almost all i watch today other guy i have already watched at least seven episodes of storage wars and i watched about five or six yesterday too (laughs) that's a problem it's my favorite show on television right now uh for many many reasons I'm. I got a little bit of a little schoolboy crush on Brandy. That's true. You have way more <laughs> than a schoolboy crush on that chick. Maybe so. And I here's was, the thing: is that doesn't say a whole lot about you. It says. It says I'm a. I. I I'm very grounded in my taste. That's what it says. <laughs> I hope Honey Bond don't listen to this. <laughs> whatever she knows, Brandy is delightful. I think she's. I think she's funny and she's very attractive. I love the show in general. But yes, yeah, she's a highlight of it for me. Here's a guy that I don't like, Here's the though. Thing. Here's the thing. If you're just strictly talking about chicks on TV, she falls somewhere in between probably Blanche from Golden Girls. <laughs> like, probably right around the Blanche for me. That low? Oh, yeah. You telling me you take, uh, you t- you take the mom from Modern Family first? All of them. <laughs> Everyone on that show, especially little Mexican kid. Manny. No, I didn't mean the I didn't mean the Mexican mother or the Spanish mother from from Modern Family. I meant the Julie what's her face? The blonde. Yeah. It's not what how was that even, how do you break like like this is a normal rational person. I don't like her. Hey look, look, this is a normal rational person like, 
oh, Brandy from Pawn Stars. So you're telling me that uh, you like the mom from Raising Hope. That's that's where I would go with that. <laughs> She's way better than the mom from Raising Hope. No. Uh, don't don't make don't make fun of Brandy. A bit that's- plumper. All right, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go defending my 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 crush on Brandy. I am though. What I wanted to talk about was this was this article, and uh, a guy neither one of us like on the show, Dave Hester. Yep. Yeah. If you've seen the show, he's the the guy in the black hat that says yep all the time. He wears glasses. He's a general. He, he's an ass. Ever wonder how those cunning buyers on A and E's storage wars continue to get so lucky in their attempt to find treasure in abandoned storage? But units? they don't. They do a lot. Like uh, almost every episode, somebody makes two or three thousand dollars on a locker. Right, but here each episode, they're only showing like four lockers at those events. They're not those those places aren't just auctioning off four lockers. They're probably auctioning off twenty lockers. Yeah, but I'm saying if every week I'm making four or five thousand dollars on a locker, that's a decent living right there. But and they you're don't. assuming. I'm saying most weeks somebody does. Some one, yes, one of them will. All right, but the idea is that is that you're you're not seeing every locker they ever buy. First of all, and also occasionally they score fifteen thousand on one or twenty thousand on a locker every now and again. Yeah, yeah all of them have struck big every, at least once. Anyway, we're about to find out apparently how they get so lucky on occasion. Cast member Dave Hester is suing the cable network and Original Productions, claiming he was wrongfully terminated after he accused the show of committing fraud. According to the suit filed today in Los Angeles Superior Court, Hester was fired from the top-rated series after making light of its outrageous conduct. In one episode, a pile of old newspapers announcing the death of Elvis Presley was discovered, the lawsuit states. In another episode, a BMW mini car was found buried under a pile of trash. When Hester complained to producers that A&E's fraudulent conduct of salting and staging the storage lockers was possibly illegal, he was fired. The suit says that Hester is the most experienced buyer on the show, uh, his bio says that he's been at it for about 25 years. He once apparently purchased a box lot at an abandoned moving and storage auction for 750 bucks that contained a painting from Impressionist artist Jack Wilkinson. Uh, the Smiths, uh, the suit says, he sold that for $155,000. First of all, the fact that the suit includes all of this, like, like effectively his like curriculum vitae as a as a storage unit buyer. Yeah, but here's the thing is, he bought... The, why the fuck do you need to put that into record? Dude, but he bought a unit. He himself, several, mm. several years before the show even happened... It's the reason, like, he was the a guy... Unit, bought a unit for 70, for 700 bucks and sold one thing in that... For $150,000. Where, where was, where was, uh, where was A&E then? Well, that was before they had a show. That was the whole... Exactly, exactly. So this shit happens. Yes. I think he's bitching just because he didn't buy any of those. He, he, he didn't, he got outbid on all of those. Uh... So you're thinking what happened is, is it's like a poker situation. He had a racket that nobody knew about, and then uh, somebody shows up with their TV cameras, and now they got this whole following. It's harder for him to buy these units at steals and make hundreds of thousands of dollars in profit every year. He started bitching. They threw him off the show. Now he's suing him. Um, no, I th- actually I think he, yeah I, I think he's I think he I think he's probably right. I think it is staged, but it's finding the legal loophole that makes to make it illegal. And this is a cocksucker who will do that, who will be like, this show maybe has three more seasons, four more seasons. Well, I'm about to bust this on him and make a couple of million in this one hit and be done with it. Take my money and run it. That's how he makes his living. That's a, that's a real bitch. I, okay, so the, question, so the question is, do you think it's fake? You think yeah. a lot, if not all, of it is staged? Yeah, yeah I, most of it. Yeah, well, I mean, we've talked, I think, I think we may have talked on here before. I, you and I have both seen a reality show filmed even at one point or another. So, like, it, like we know that some of it is at least... Scripted. Yes. Yeah. Yes. If not out and out scripted, then all but scripted. Right. And you assume that's the case even, as, even with something this is, like this. This is what reality TV... This is, this is how you can sum up reality TV, okay? Okay. If you watch... Any of the stuff, say like um, Waiting for Guffman or A Mighty Wind or Best in Show, okay? None of those have scripts. None of those movies, none of those sh- movies have scripts. It is a series of circumstances that they agree upon and put themselves in and then act that part out. Right. To get that scene. 
I think that this is much the same way, except that these guys are not professional actors, but they are put in these situations, and then we are allowed to see their reactions and how they handle themselves, and that's the reality of the TV show. Right, and the the idea is that these scenarios that we're going to film and stage for you are very similar to the way in which their normal lives are are yes. played out. Yeah, that's the that's the yes. idea anyway. Yeah, I think you're probably right on that. Now the question is. Does would he have a be, case for it to be illegal? Yes. Would it be illegal for them to go in and actually stage uh, items in these lockers or whatever ahead of time? I and don't know. My question would be, okay, so first of all, the reason why lockers are sold like that is is because of legalities. Like the if, if the units, if the people who own the storage units could go through them individually and look for treasures, then they would. They don't because they're not legally allowed to. You have to sell them as a lot like that. You have to cut the cut the lock, and it's it's. And each state may have slightly different right. variations on the the rules there. So I guess what Hester is saying is, the A and E is going in and putting extra items in some of these units or whatever before they or or outright staging whole units. But my point, if, if they. I'm sure somebody's following behind if, if it's 90 days that it's got to be evacuated or whatever. Like, what's to what's to keep them from setting up the units ahead of time and then letting effort. it be... <laughs> you're saying the production company just wouldn't go through the effort, likely? Yeah, like, oh, uh, somebody get me a BMW mini bike. No, I got to get somebody here to put it in this fucking storage unit. <laughs> like, All right, let me find a Mickey Mantle signed rookie card. <laughs> you, you, like, so, so, uh, I, I'm sure some of it is set, set up. I'm sure that they have a uh, – here's what I think that they do um, because they do uh, – If you, you can go through our local paper actually and it will have uh, – in that local paper, it will have storage units up for auction and it will list things in these storage units. So what I'm guessing is those things are actually in those units. Right. Uh, but the production company knows this beforehand and sets the auction up for that and has that specific unit for bid. I got you. You see what I'm saying? Yes. So the, the so then the question is, do you think he's going to win the suit? I I imagine he thinks he, he thinks he's going to win the suit, and that's what matters. Yes. I I imagine that he settles. I think the I think the network has far too much money to lose. I think they pay him a large amount of money to go home and be quiet. And that's really what he, he wants to do. So. He's like, well, I don't. You know what? I don't want to have to go to the auctions they're telling me to go to. I don't want to have to film like they want me to film. I, want I don't want to have to wait. I don't want to have to wait three seasons to make this money. You give me that money, and I'll shut the fuck up and go away. Or at least a large enough portion of it that I that I can be satisfied. Yeah, that he's I a made fucking my... weasel. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I for one think the show will be better without him. I think he's there. I won't mean, it's... there? Won't it? Won't be. Why not? You have to find another um, another villain. F- villain. You have to find another foil. I don't think that's hard to find. I think you it, you can turn just about anybody into an asshole. I'm sure that line of work. Well, they're is trying. Full they're trying. Assholes. They have they have a guy. Oh, there's a new guy that's been on the show that Kinda. I kind of. He's yet. been he he hasn't really been a regular, but he's been on there a couple of times. He and the auctioneer have gotten into it several times. Oh, I have seen one episode with that guy, yeah. big guy, heavy set. Yeah, guy. yeah, yeah. He's on a couple more episodes. It's not Dan, but it's because Dan's the auctioneer, but it's like Mike or something like that. Yeah, whatever. But they get yeah. they get into it a couple of times. Yeah, 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 whatever. I'm fine with it. I, I'm not watching for Dave anyway. So, so the question is, will I continue to watch Storage Wars? Yep. Oh, that's fucking. <laughs> you went a long way, dude. <laughs> Whatever, man. It was totally worth it. Let's get a little listener mail in here, or, or I should say, a little listener feedback. Jamail, Jamail is here. Ooh. You can give us feedback, by the way, at two guys one pod at me dot com. That's the email address, all spelled out. Two guys one pod at me dot com. M M E dot com. Yeah. What did you think I was saying? I mean, I know you say at me, but I mean, they might go to two guys, one pod dot one guy dot com. Oh, yeah. oh, nice. At me dot com. If yes. you do that, you're a fucking retard. Just trying to help you out. <laughs> so the other place that you can find us is uh, on Facebook, Facebook dot com slash two guys, one pod. We were talking last episode about Christmas movies. Yep. You mentioned Nightmare Before Christmas. Yes. Uh, I said Die Hard. Uh, we watched, actually, Nightmare Before Christmas last night. And then the you have the audacity there. to tell me that the Nightmare Before Christmas is not a Christmas movie. Hey, look. I'll give you the exact review that Sun Number 1 gave it last night. Movie's over. And I said, well, 
what'd you think, kid? And he goes, it was pretty good, Daddy, but it was silly. I said, why? He said, because Christmas would never be scary like Halloween. That is a Halloween movie that happens to oh, have a cameo oh, from Christmas. Oh, no, no, no. He said, but Christmas would not be scary like Halloween. Not that Halloween could not be Christmas. He knew that it was a Christmas movie. The movie's about Christmas. So that was the first thing he said. Uh, uh, I do. We disagree on the interpretation of my four-year-old, apparently. <laughs> we'll have to bring him in here to break yeah, the to, tie. To clarify. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so I asked that question on our Facebook page, too, though. What What's your favorite uh, holiday movie? Um, here's a couple that I, I'm going to read some of the reactions we got, and then I want your take on them. Okay. Uh, if any stand out to me, I might respond to Love Actually. Nope. No? Nope. You not a? Are you heartless, or is it just that one in particular that uh, you don't care for? Uh, uh, Love Actually is one of the big ensemble movies, right? Yeah, this is yeah, the British fuck one. all of them. Uh, trading Spaces. Oh hey, man, that's a good one. I said trade. It's not Trading Spaces. It's Trading Places. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're talking looking about looking good, Lewis. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Feeling good. No, I got it backwards. Looking good. I don't know. Anyway, yes, it's a good movie with uh, D- uh, Dan Aykroyd and. Uh, Eddie Murphy. Eddie Murphy. Yeah. And the, um, from True Lies, Katie, J- Jamie Lee Curtis. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I, I will, okay, that gets the stamp of approval. Family Stone. It's a very chick flick. Um, That's the one with uh, the girl from Sex and the City. Yeah, the girl with the, the honker. With the horse face, yes. By the way, I don't find attractive in the least. I was just about to ask, does she get your Not pass a, because no, of the nose? No, she's fucking creepy. Sarah Jessica Parker, who are we talking about, by the way? I th- I think she's a delightful young lady. I'm very fond of her husband as an actor and a, as a gentleman, but I don't. It is like it is as if an archaeologist found some vaguely human bones, <laughs> threw a horse face on it, and animated it. That's Sarah Jessica Parker. <laughs> and that's other guy, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, write in your hate mail to two guys one pod at me dot com. If- if people really write in hate mail because I think Sarah Jessica Parker is a dog, then fuck them. If people who would that, write I, in hate mail because we said something mean about Sarah Jessica Parker, do not listen to this podcast. We'll right? get hurrahed. <laughs> be right cool. on. Um, Elf. I actually thought about saying that one. Um, Elf's a really good one. Elf's didn't. one of those great ones because it's it's just as good like for subversive humor and like so like teenagers or like young like twenty year olds can watch it, but families can watch it together too because it's totally clean. My favorite my favorite part is whenever he's telling his journey from the North Pole to what was it New York? Yes, from the North Pole to New York, he's like through the forest of candy canes, past the whirly twirly gumdrops. I'm like, hell yeah, I want to make that journey. It's a long way from the North Pole. Yeah. Uh, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. I don't particularly care for, and I know people are going to be outraged by this. No. I don't particularly care for any National Lampoon. Uh, do, is that Does that go for all Chevy Chase, period, or is it? Mostly. Yeah. Yeah. Not a Chevy Chase fan, man. He fall in with Bill Murray for you? I like Bill Murray more than Chevy Chase. Nice. Well, I, yeah. we'll agree there at least. I do like Chevy Chase, but I, I like... Um, the scene in the attic in National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation where he he gets locked in the attic and he watches the home movies, like it makes me cry every time. And he I just, don't. He, I, I imagine him. I, I picture him visiting a lot of tea rooms. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't think I do actually. Like you know what a tea room is? I, I don't guess I do. Okay, so tea rooms for those of you who don't know. Okay. Is a term for places. Uh, most of them are like public restrooms, like rest stops, <laughs> where dudes go in to get handies and low? sucked off by other dudes. Talk about the download. That's called a tea room. That's All the right. term for a tea room. You think Chevy Chase is a tea room? Oh, kind of guy? fucking right, he is. Really? Yes. I think he's gay. And I'm not saying out. he's the one necessarily receiving. <laughs> <laughs> You're hilarious. All right. Uh, we got another vote for Die Hard. Home Alone. Where do you stand on the Home Alone series? Uh, I'm man. Yeah, the first one is real good. D- I watched the first one actually last year. Again. That was probably that. Hey, Home. Al- the first one, man. Whenever I was a kid, was probably the movie I quoted the most. Keep the change. You yeah, filthy filthy all the time, man. <laughs> it's, it's, and it's good all the time. Yeah. that's the beauty of it, man. Uh, Kevin. Uh, What's the kid's name? It's Malone, right? Kevin Malone. I think he's. I think the family are the Malones. Anyway, he is so. No, they, there's no fucking way they can be the Malones. Why not? Home Alone. Oh, I didn't. There's even no think way they're the Malones. That. Maybe not. I don't know. Uh, shit. 
Uh, we both got supercomputers. Let's look them up. Um, but anyway, Kevin is his first name, though. And, and he's fucking, he's so brilliant. He's witty. He's really well written for, like, a kid. And I, I felt like I was that kid. I was the kid that was far smarter than anybody else in the family, like obviously. Like, if, if, you, if you were under assault at your house by burglars, like, you'd, you'd handle it? Well, yeah, but not only that, but, like, I, I'm the only, I felt like at seven, I was the only one in the family that if left alone at home for the week, would have been fine. I felt like at seven and watching that movie, I'm smart enough to know that shit doesn't work. <laughs> I'm uh, running. No, so where do you stand on this on the second one? What was that? New York, Home Alone in New York. Was that the second? Yeah, one? Home Alone Two is it, he he gets on the plane and goes to the wrong place. He ends up at the hotel um, in New York with the talk boy. He's got the little re- the recording the traveling Walkman thing in his yeah, hand. Yeah, I didn't care for it, man. Um, I liked I liked a lot about it. Uh, that was the one that ends up in the brownstone. Like he t- oh, he beats yeah. the. What was your What was your favorite trap he sets in Home Alone One? <sighs> There's a lot of really really good ones. Um, the the hand warmer on the yes that was gonna be mine doorknob that's one of the best ones I think like that one that like it was dude a really that great really one. fucking hurt man I love it though when the very first time the guy sticks his head through the doggy door and then he shoots him in the in the, in the face with the pellet gun or whatever yeah. like I think that was just like a perfect like and he he says something witty to it too like hey you scumbag and then shoots him in the you know uh, something he has a quip and then he shoots him in the face like yeah. I love it. Love it. Uh, it's Kevin McAllister. You were right. They didn't. Do, they didn't go Malone. But I knew it was an Irish name. I knew no it was one. An Irish no name. one would like. If you thought about that, you wouldn't have said it. <laughs> Kevin. Kevin Malone. Yeah. Home Alone. Home Alone. Yeah. It's. They're home Malone. <laughs> yeah. It's terrible. <laughs> you made me Eddie Murphy laugh. <laughs> nice. Um. Uh no wait where were we we got sidetracked there so Home Alone what is, so you like the first one you not you don't care for the follow ups nobody does I don't think that's true I really like the uh, the original did you ever see uh, right. Christmas Story right you really like the original excuse me I like the original I like the second one too I don't yeah, think hey, I've ever man, seen take, the third one the Christmas Story gives me anxiety man the uh, why what do you mean why <laughs> that whole that whole movie's about anxiety that's what that whole <laughs> fucking movie's about. Well, yeah, but it's it, and the voiceover doesn't help. The voiceover does not help. I don't like it. It gives me more anxiety uh, because he's also anxious. Yes, like he reads I can't. it even as a forty-five-year-old man or whatever. He reads it with with yes. bated breath. Yeah, I waited to like, open like the magazine getting, and read the final words of the secret code. I'm, I can't do it. Yeah, like whenever he gets kicked down by the fucking Santa Claus, get I, like it, I, I, it's hard for me to breathe. Or the kid that beats him up. Uh, uh, even whenever he gets the Red Rider BB gun, I'm like, he's going to put his fucking eye out. Like, he's going to put his eye out. See, but I think that's one of the reasons why that movie is so amazing. Because even as grown men, you immediately go right back to that mentality. Yeah, of, I can't. Of, of a child's, uh, you know, one child Angst. against the world yeah. or whatever. Yes, the world is nothing but but anxiety and worry for uh, for an eight-year-old kid or whatever. Yeah, I don't like it. I th- I think it's wonderful because then you get the vindication too. It's like you get to experience the joy of him getting the the BB gun. You get to experience the the fucking satisfaction, nope. and yet and yet like also the maturity that comes when he beats the shit out of the bully. He beats the bully at the end, and he's crying the whole way home too. Even though he's won, it's he's yeah. victorious. But that's a man's victory there because you realize what he's lost in it. Dude, too. hey, that's cool, that's man. But stuff. guess what? You don't want to do that on the holidays? No, not only do I not want to do that on the holidays, but those few moments are not enough. That does not bring me enough joy to get rid of the anxiety. That's fucking funny. I'm, not only have I not seen of this one, and not, I mean, not seen this one, I don't think I've ever even heard of maybe this they're, one. Maybe they're fucking with you. I suppose it's possible. Uh, do you know the best Christmas pageant ever? Isn't that a Charlie Brown movie? I don't think so. Uh, the Charlie Brown movie is... What is the so the the Halloween one is it's the Great Pumpkin Charlie Brown and the Christmas. What's the Christmas one called? There's I don't know. There's one. It's not the best Christmas pageant ever. I guarantee you. That, that. sounds like a Hallmark movie. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's I don't. That does not sound like something that I would put on my list of best holiday movies ever. What are some of the other ones? Uh, that's I'm rolling through right now. White Christmas. Have you seen White Christmas? Never heard of it. The the, the Bob uh, Bob Hope not Bob Hope. Is it? I don't know. Wait, hang on a minute. Who's in White Christmas? Shit, I just watched it the other day. Actually, it's uh, it's like a, 
It's the classic uh, Bing Crosby. Bing Crosby, Rosemary Clooney, uh, Danny Kay, and Vera Ellen. Danny Kay and uh, Bing Crosby play army buddies who uh, go into business together like a show business duo kind of deal. They're like Martin and Lewis. Yeah, yeah. And they, through a series of misadventures, hook up with these two sisters that have a sister act, singing sister act or whatever, that are going to work in Vermont for the winter. They go up to see them and flirt, maybe get lucky, and they happen upon their old commanding officer. What does that- si- sister act have to do with White Christmas? It's not the m- movie sister act. There is a sister act in the film. So these two guys are a duo. There are, it's two guys that are in show business. Oh, okay, and two girls. And they hook up with two girls that All are right. sisters. Yes. So the two girls are performing in this uh, inn in Vermont. The two guys go up there to see them and to flirt for a little while, maybe get, get lucky. The Maharelli sisters. Exactly. Their, their commanding off officer, their old commanding officer, is the guy who owns the inn. The inn is doing terribly so they, this famous duo, effect, effectively Martin Lewis, Martin and Lewis, decide that they're going to do a special show there at the end to boom up business for their old boss. It's a heartwarming story. Was their story. old boss Captain Dan? No, their old boss was not Captain Dan. There's, it's a really good movie. It's got, of course, the White Christmas. Bing Crosby sings White Christmas a couple of times. Some other really good songs in there. Uh, there there's, another, there's only one other Christmas movie that if it's on, I'll watch it. Like if I run across it. Uh, and that's Rudolph Red Nosed Reindeer, man. Uh, that was one of the other ones that got mentioned. Uh, Charlie, I want to be Charlie a Brown's dentist. Christmas. You watch what? I want to be a dentist. <laughs> <laughs> um, somebody else may, uh, gave a vote for the Muppet Christmas Carol. I know how you feel about uh, creatures with uh, who, people's who hands up their asses. Uh, does she doesn't have a nickname? Um, yeah, it's fuckhead. <laughs> Scrooged. Bill Murray, so I'm assuming you're going to say no to that. We mentioned that last week, didn't we? It was amazing. No, I don't, I don't care. I love Scrooge, man. It's really, really good. Bill Murray's good in it, too. Uh, it's got uh, fucking what's-his-name's brother that comes in to shoot up the place. Yes, that's right. Ron Howard's brother. Uh, Fucking what is his name? Clint. Clint Howard, yeah. Which, amazingly... Is an even less attractive Howard than yeah, Ron. Yeah, like it's if you take Ron and then make him look fucked up. That's Clint. What Howard. the fuck happened to Opie? Man? I don't know, dude. Well, Opie aged poorly, and his yes. brother got mutated apparently. Man, Ooh. and he's the one that has a professional career in front of the camera. That's what's amazing. It's yeah, like but I'll, th- hey, hey, I love that Cat and Tango and Cash. <laughs> um, what about Bad Santa? Uh, I've I've seen it once. I don't know if I I think I was in and out. I don't like I've Billy never Bob. seen it. Uh, yeah, I like Sling Blade. I like, I, d- I like French fried potatoes. Mm-hmm. I like Pushing Tin. <laughs> I've never seen Pushing Tin. Um, and uh, the last one, we'd be remiss if we didn't mention it. Wonderful Life. Are you a Wonderful Life guy? I am not, by the way. No, I'm not. And you know why I'm not? Why? Because wa- the Salvation Army, there's not that many goddamn angels, people. <laughs> there's not. Stop ringing the fucking bell. I see you standing there. You're wearing all red. I see you. Don't ring that goddamn bell anymore. Every time a bell rings, an angel gets his wings. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. See? Yeah. Yeah. I don't... I uh, I don't like Jimmy Stewart. That's why I don't like what? This is a Wonderful Life. I really like Harvey. I love the movie Harvey. Yeah? With the rabbit? Yes. I do not like Jimmy Stewart. Uh, You didn't like To Kill a Mockingbird? That's not Jimmy Stewart. That's... um. The guy that doesn't have a terrible fucking stutter. Uh, what's his? Uh, um, not Gary Cooper. Uh, I thought it was something Stewart. No, it's uh, that was the guy from High Noon or whatever. I think. Hang on, just saying it to kill a mockingbird. Oh yeah, and he and he also in Twelve Angry Man. Gregory Peck. Gregory, Gregory Peck, Peck. There you go. Yeah, he was in To Kill a Mockingbird. Yeah, I like that dude. Nah, I don't care if you don't like Jimmy Stewart. Then as long as you like Gregory Peck. No, I like Gregory Peck. Okay. I really like Atticus Finch. I like anybody that I mean, like Gregory Peck in To Kill a Mockingbird is amazing. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, I don't get the I, like the Jimmy Stewart language, like the his manner of speaking is an issue for me. Like, like I you have, have to try to talk. Nobody. There's that's no what way, I'm saying. There's no way somebody really talks like that. That's like, what I'm saying. It's got to be an affectation. Yeah. Uh, and whether it is or not. It takes me out of almost anything that he's doing. For some reason in Harvey, and maybe it's because of the, like, the first time I saw it and I have like a nostalgia for it or something, I don't know. But Harvey, I don't mind it so much. Everything else I've ever seen him in, though, I'm just sitting there going, oh, for Christ's sake, say what you're trying to oh, say. Man, you, know, you know what other movie kind of evokes the same feeling 
of To Kill a Mockingbird. What? Of Mice and Men. Uh, yeah, that's a good. Well, no, wait a minute. Are you talking about there was a black and white one, right? I don't think I've ever seen the black and white one. I've seen the no, no the, I don't. The Malkovich. Black and white one, I didn't see. Yeah, the Malkovich, Gary Sinise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think there yeah. was an older one too, though. I think that's a remake. Yeah, but, but yeah, the Malkovich, Gary Sinise is very. good. I feel I feel horrible in both of them. Yeah, it, it's a different movie, but yes, I both of them are very affecting, very good films. I, if you haven't seen To Kill a Mockingbird, go do yourself a favor. That's not a holiday movie, but uh, Jesus. So anyway, you sticking with, in retrospect, you, you sticking oh, with yeah, Nightmare Before yeah. Christmas? Yeah. You're going to flip-flop? No, I mean, I literally saw it last night. I, I can't get behind you, though. I mean, it's a good movie. I'll even give you that it's a Christmas movie. You can't. You, I don't you think can't, it is a that's Christmas not some, movie. That's not something for you to give. It is. I was willing to concede it. But I like I still don't think it's I think it's arguable. It's, it's in arguable. the name of the movie. Yes. Santa Claus is in the movie. Half the goddamn movie is about capturing Santa Claus. <laughs> yeah, that takes way too long. Not to pull only off, by not the way. only is this about Christmas, this dude is dissecting Christmas <laughs> the whole time. He just happens to be a skeleton doing it. What is this Christmas? What does it mean? Uh, that's the other thing. I didn't remember the music being quite so dramatic. Like, there is some, I mean, and I'm a, I'm a Broadway guy. There's some fucking over-the-top Anthony Andrew Lloyd Webber. Dude, Oogie Boogie Man? I love that guy. Yeah. Uh, not for me. Not for me. And the, uh, the, the three little kids that he sends to go get? Yeah. I love those guys. Uh, son number one really liked those guys too. Yeah. He appreciated their antics significantly. Yes. Yeah. Uh, he also really enjoyed it when uh, the, Jack was dropping off the toys and they were all attacking the children. He thought that was just a laugh riot too. Wait, when did he? he what what time of the year did he drop the toys off? Mm, oh, that was Christmas Eve, I guess. Oh, he did. Christmas Christmas night Cri- maybe. Christmas. Yeah, Christmas. Oh, hmm. Mm. <laughs> Funny how that happens in a Christmas movie. I, I think I'm going to watch Die Hard tonight. It's been, I was trying to think yesterday how long it had been since I've seen Die Hard again. And the first one, it's been at least two or three years since I've seen it. And honest to God, it's it's in my top five movies of all time. I Bullshit. love, love no Die way. Hard. It's one of my favorite no films. Way. Top five movies of all time. As far as my You're- favorite, I'm not saying it's the best. My favorite. It's one of my five favorite films, yes. Uh, here's the, here's the other not even on secret. my list. Die Hard three, Die Hard with a Vengeance or whatever, the one with Sam Jackson. That one would be probably in my top ten or fifteen. Dude, hey, hey, Die Hard, not even my top five Bruce Willis movies. Name me five Bruce Willis movies better than Die Hard. Okay. You, I, I can't imagine that this is going to be anywhere near true. Okay. Okay. Fifth Element. I, I can see an argument to be made for that. I don't agree okay. with it, but I can see it. Pulp Fiction. Again, I can see an argument to be made for it. Those two are reasonable. You shall pass. Okay, so those two, I get I get a pass on you those get, two. You get right off the top, though. you got to go to IMDb. I appreciate that, by the way. Because the next one you want to pull out is The Sixth Sense, then you can't do it, can you? Because you and I both know that shit don't hold up. And I am a Shyamalan apologist. Uh, it Don't hold up. Is what it does. It's not it a movie. You can, it does, it's not a movie you can watch over and over. Nope. One time. Yeah. What, maybe twice if you watch it with a friend who didn't see, see it the their first reaction. time. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I get. Okay. I won't. I won't put it it's on. It's not there. that good a movie. It's not that good a movie. It does not hold up. His performance is decent in it. It's not that good a movie. I'm gonna go with the whole nine yards. I. I I'm gonna. I'm not gonna draw your card there necessarily, but. It, I think you and I are some of the only people in the world that have the appreciation for that movie that it deserves. It's a very, Dude, it's very hilarious. Funny movie. Dude, when Matthew Perry runs into that closed <laughs> glass door, I must have re- that was back. I had that shit on tape. I think we've talked about it even on the show. I watched that for the first night, the same night that I saw Magnolia for the first time, and 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 I watched it twice back to back that same night. Anyway, the whole nine yards is fucking hilarious. Yeah, I'm down with you, but it's not. I think we're alone in, in our appreciation for that movie. No. That movie didn't do that well. No. I mean, it got a sequel, but that movie did not do that uh, well. Okay, Moonrise Kingdom. I don't guess I've ever even seen Moonrise Kingdom. It, it's You can actually get it at Redbox now. It's a, it's a war movie? Um, What about... I didn't. I don't really care for the expend... Like, I appreciate the Expendables, but I'm not going to put it up there as, oh, it's better than Die Hard. Well, and I haven't seen Expendables 2, but even in that one, I think his... 
like his role is pretty limited. He's just a cameo in Expendables One. You can't count that as a Bruce Willis movie. I don't think he's in it, but it's not a movie about him. Sin City. Um, it's a real big cameo piece. He's only he's only really in a third of it. But even then, I would give it to you. I don't think it's better than Die Hard. I've though. got a, I got a movie that I know you'll put up there. Okay. Um, that I won't. Unbreakable. I won't put it up. It's not better than Die Hard. Okay. I love Unbreakable. It, I like it better than all the other Shyamalan movies. Right. I, I mean, I know it was one of your yeah. favorites. I hate. I hate the movie. Fucking Sam Jackson and Bruce Willis, dude, and superheroes. I. You can't. Like that's all I need. The scene where him and his kid are just fucking loving, going piling up on the weights or whatever until he breaks his 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 workbench. That's okay. I'm gonna awesome. Put, I'm gonna put Armageddon above it. Now, see there, I'll go with you. I'll even go with you there. I'll. Uh, you know what? It's not even my favorite Bruce. No, nah, oh, it's so close. I I love Armageddon in a big bad way, mostly because of Ben Affleck getting weepy about Bruce Willis at the end. I know, of me it. too. Like, I cry, dude, every time, yeah. every fucking time. And it's not it's not his daughter. It's Ben Affleck, okay. dude. Four rooms. I, I like Four Rooms a lot. Four Rooms isn't better than Die Hard. Four Come Rooms on. is no. Four Rooms is hit and miss. Four Rooms is very good in in parts and very okay, not this good movie. In parts. This movie, I. I love I love Twelve Monkeys. Twelve Monkeys is also very very good. It's not as good as Die Hard. Die Hard is a damn near perfect action flick, dude. And the fact that it's a Christmas movie too is just better. The Last Boy Scout. Uh, it's been it's been almost a decade since I saw that one. I'm not going to pass judgment on it. Okay, would you would you count Look Who's Talking since he he does the voice of Mikey? Yes, I think you can count those, although they're John Travolta movies, not Bruce Willis movies. I love Travolta, early Travolta at least. I I got to say I watched the Have you seen the music video of him and and uh uh Olivia Newton-John dancing with their new oh, single? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's some of the creepiest shit I've yeah. ever seen in my life, Okay, so dude. I'm taking for me, all right, for my five movies Better than Die Hard. Five Bruce Willis movies better than Die Hard. I'm taking... I like to call this the bullshit list. <laughs> I'm taking... Okay. Pulp Fiction. Fair. I'm taking 12, 12 Monkeys, even though you, you may not like A lot of people don't. I'm taking The Fifth Element. Armageddon's four, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I will take... I don't know if I like The Whole Nine Yards better than... The Jackal. The Jackal's really Isn't good. It? Isn't it? Oh, The Jackal. I forgot about the. I fucking love Bruce Willis, man. <laughs> <laughs> so you can you can interchange them, but I do I, I do like both The Whole Nine Yards and The Jackal better than Die Hard. You like The Whole Nine Yards better than? I like I like comedies way more than action. And then I, I feel like Die Hard is. There's so much humor in Die Hard too, though. I feel like Die Hard is very cookie-cutter action. It's only cookie-cutter action 30 years hence when they've remade it a dozen times. Like, at at the time, no one had done... First of all... Yeah, because all the action movies back then were like Rambo and Cobra and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. They all looked like Stallone, and it was all in the fucking jungles. It was ex-Vietnam you know, Vietnam vets. This was just a street cop who happens upon a bad situation, and then... It oh, you know, what, it. you know what kills you know? me in that movie though? What? Walking across glass. Oh no, I love that's what it's again. It's one of those moments in the film where like you really that brings me into it because I'm like that is a it is one of my great fears like to walk okay, like cool, to, have to walk across just, a lot of gra- uh, glass like that. I just showed that. Oh, you don't like being die, uncomfortable. No, I just showed yeah, well that too, but I also just showed that Die Hard was not in my top five Bruce Willis movies. No, you did. That's fair enough. I you know, I put down a, I threw down the gauntlet and you stood up to it. I'm impressed. I'm impressed. You named five uh, Bruce Willis movies that aren't ridiculous to say they are better than Die Dude, Hard. Dude, I kinda wanna watch The Jackal now, man. Yeah, well, I'm watching I'm watching Die Hard tonight. I'll Dude, I'll when watch he gets Jackal that, when with he gets you sometimes. Fucking soon. gun made? And then tells that cat to run. Jack Black, right? Isn't it Jack oh, Black that he shoots yeah, down? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, which is probably why I love it because I fucking hate Jack Black. No, 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 no. He doesn't. He doesn't make him. Uh, he doesn't make him run at first though. The first, he tells him to to carry the can out there and set it up, and then he shoots the can, and then he gets him to hold the can, and he shoots off his fucking arm. He shoots his arm off at the elbow or whatever. Like that's the, oh that shit's he's badass in that movie, yeah. dude. Who's the good? Who's the good guy? Richard Gere. Richard Gere is the good guy in yeah. there, right? That's a good fucking movie, man. 
Here's my problem with that one, though. I watched you the can't Jackal. See Richard, Richard, you can't see Richard Gere playing the character that he plays in Well, that. no, that's true. He's not nearly badass enough yeah, to play no, that character. Yeah, not at all. But, it, well, in... Like if they re- if they made that movie now, you'd put Liam Neeson in that role, and then it's fine. Then I'm like, yes, absolutely. And then you put and you put uh, Jason Statham as uh, Bruce Willis's character. Oh, shit, I was just saying, cast Bruce Willis again. again. I don't give a, I don't <laughs> give a shit. Bruce Willis versus Liam Neeson. I'd love to see that man. Like it's the Jackal two. I don't give a shit. Make it a. I don't. I don't remember how it ends. Does he die? I'm sure he dies at the end. Doesn't matter. I the movie that came out though, or at least that I saw around the same time as the first time I saw the Jackal was in the Line of Fire, Malkovich and Eastwood. Oh yeah, yeah. And I feel like it's a very similar movie. I told like you it's I haven't plotting seen. And I told you I haven't seen many Eastwood movies. You haven't seen in the oh, Line of Fire. We talked about this. No, I missed this somehow, or I don't remember. No, we talked. Yeah, we talked about this for for Eastwood. I've seen uh, Unforgiven and uh, Gran Torino, and that's like pretty much it, really. Yeah. So you, like none of the classic westerns no. and definitely none of the side stuff. Not really. All right, what else we got? We got to move. We got to get some more topics in this puppy. No, we're we're about to we're about to wrap. I it know up. we talked about the we're same thing hour. for fucking an hour. No, we haven't. Yes, we have. No, we didn't, dude. We did two news stories before we ever started talking about movies. They're Hollywood Day movies, and then we started talking about Bruce Willis for about fifteen minutes, for about ten minutes or so. Now. I feel like I got sucked in. Oh, I did have. Yeah, I got. I got, just got one bit. All right. So the world's supposed to end. Uh, will it end before? Will it? it Next Thursday, right? The 25th. No, I thought it was the 20th. 21st. We need to look that shit up, I guess. It's the 21st. All right. It's the 21st. If the world doesn't end... So that's next Friday. Yes. So we will record another episode before the world supposedly ends. We won't get to share it with you, though. (laughs) Right. You may not... You may never hear it. A couple of of tips for you guys who actually believe the world is going to end uh, on the 20th. Call all your loved ones and let them know that you love them. It's a great idea. You, t- you yes. told me, and you're actually going to do this. Yeah, like yeah. You don't think the world's ending, but you're just like, hey, it's an Occam's razor kind of, and not Occam's razor, but there's Welcome. a, there's a, no, there's a postulate for the belief in God. It says, what, what do you have to gain if there is a God by believing him? And what do you have to lose if there is no God by believing in him? You, you, you et cetera, et cetera. What you should do is hedge your bets and believe. Likewise, in your case, Except you're like, that if you're I don't think your the world's you're not really believing. Well, yeah, exactly. But but I'm saying in this scenario, you're like, I don't think the world's going to end. I am going to go ahead and call everybody I know. Though, tell them yeah, I love and them. Just tell them I love them. In case it does, them. at least I did that. Yeah, in case the world does end, I I can die knowing <laughs> that I told everyone that I loved that I loved them. I think that's a, kind of a beautiful thing. And if it and if the world doesn't end, I still got to tell everybody I loved them. So that's there's no loss here. Got a little extra love rolling around yeah. out there. There you go. Um, so in case the world doesn't end predictions i've got three of them i think that in the future in the near future whole towns homes in particular but towns will will become factories so for example this town would we would each home would have a 3d printer and we would uh at our own homes create car parts for gm or whoever it's interesting right uh, well, the, the 3D printing is, is a really big deal on micro manufacturing. And here's the thing. It's only going to get better. Yeah. It's only, that technology is only going to get better. It's only going to get cheaper, right? So if I'm a company, I just hire a bunch of people in, this, in a small town to do this. I'm out whatever the money is of the printer. They make it. I don't, I don't have to own a factory. I pay them per item made, not hourly, because the printer's doing everything, really. It, it's just about them minding the store, so yeah, to speak. Yeah, right. So I pay them per item made. You can do a quota, not do a quota. But uh, a lot of small towns, a lot of rural areas, I think this will would help. Especially like say the underdeveloped countries, third world countries. You can set something like this up for them fairly easy and and start their economy rolling. I think that's a really interesting idea. Yeah, I think that's a, I mean, well, I mean, and you look at like well, like Google Fiber moving into Kansas City or whatever. Like some of these big traditionally what government would have done or whatever where a company comes in and does a, a an infrastructure project it'd be a similar kind of thing like gm would have to right, come in yes. and build up yeah. the the internet and power infrastructure for this town to make sure that everybody had the same yeah. capabilities set up everybody with the equipment teach them how to use it you go through the training program or whatever and then you just start turning out pieces it's uh it's ultimately like uh uh, what Carnegie did with the mining towns, except more fair, humane, humane, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think that that's I think that'll eventually happen. Sneaky way to get manufacturing back to the states, too. By the way, yeah. 
Although I mean, like the that the the Made in USA thing has been a big buzz over the last couple of weeks. Anyway, Apple's talking about bringing a a, a factory here. They're going to make one whole Mac um, line next year. A bunch of because uh, uh, here's what's happening. Um, a bunch of people. Look, I'm I'm about to sound like I know what I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> so. Um, they've done studies on uh, the productivity of the average American factory worker versus, say, the average the average Chinese worker. Right. The American worker puts out like thirty percent more than what that Chinese worker puts out. Okay. The difference right now is they can pay them so much less to do it. They now, could just throw numbers at this solution and fix the efficiency but, problem. But what's happening is. I think the average United States factory worker m- made like 18 bucks an hour or something. Okay. Right. Uh, currently, the average Chinese worker makes, I don't know, like two, three, something like that. But over the next five years, it's supposed to, they're, they're projecting it to get up to seven, s- eight. W- right. Somewhere around there. And at that point, it, it's no longer cost effective for the productivity that they're putting out. So that's why a lot of companies are starting now to get ahead of the game and look at bringing work back to America. So that's, I think, dude, I think that's a real, I think that's I like happen. that one. Micro, mic, micro manufacturing, whole towns are factory towns. A rebirth of factory towns. Yeah, I think, I think yeah. that we could see that coming around again. I feel real bad making these predictions just because it kind of, it takes away that I'm the curmudgeon idiot of the show. I am. Uh, the second thing is, I believe the power of government will soon be literally back in the hands of the people. This is a good one too. And I think you're spot on here. And the, the way that that happens is through... Electronic voting. Yes. In your hand voting. When I can text message my vote in. I mean, and it won't be that, but effectively, the pro- when the process is that easy. Yeah, and then technology gets up to where there's all the safeguards and everything. But a bill comes before the floor. Now, we'll still need legislatures to, to craft these bills and to come up with these laws. Uh, but I think that instead of it going in front of Congress and stuff, I think... Eventually, it'll it'll be the people. You can turn on the TV, tune in the show. They'll have a debate. You'll get to watch the debate. You'll be able to get the information that you want. And then the people can literally cast the vote that they think is best for them, which is true democracy. Well, and you, and you could even set it up so that there's a like a gateway to get to the actual voting procedure so that you have to sit through yeah, a five-minute yeah, yeah, yeah. five info drop or whatever. To get informed before you vote. Right. Here's yes. the pros. Here's the cons. Here's what the bill means. Here's the actual text of the bill. Now that you've seen all of that, click vote. You know, yes. and it's yes or no. Then I think realistically you can get your your participation numbers up to 65, 75, 80 percent of the of the eligible populace. But listen, you're never going to get to 100. Even if you make it as easy as text messaging, 100 yeah. percent of the people are never going to involve themselves because some people are so dis- disaffected and disenfranchised from the uh, uh, association or the or the government than the and those the, the people state. who and those are the people who you really don't want to vote right. In. Exactly, exactly. They don't want to take the time to be informed. Right, 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 right. right. But that would that would be really exciting. And if the question is, would we survive if we were really? Yeah, we, we may just run ourselves? us into the shit ground. You know what I'm saying? We may just fucking America's no more once that <laughs> happens. America was great until they started <laughs> letting the people. Until those fuckheads got to run it. Turns out the rich old white guys were right. They really should have been left in charge. <laughs> uh, and the th- and the third thing is, I uh, language w- languages will just go away. Um, you will no longer be taught Spanish in school or German. Languages won't even be taught in schools anymore, man. I don't know. I agreed with you at first. I don't know that I agree to that level because, I mean, if you don't, I mean, like, you'll have to teach grammar. You will have, like, you will have to. Right, but it's your language that you're learning. You're not learning somebody else. I don't. You're I'll, talking about foreign languages. Right. I will no longer. Foreign, foreign language languages instruction. Until you get up into um, uh, secondary education, until you get up into the university level. To where you're learning a language to study uh, archaeology or or history, right? Or literature. Yes, until you get into something like that. But for the average everyday person, I think, I mean, you look at the Google Glass project, for example, and, and just imagine something like that with an earpiece in. We're sitting here, you're speaking German, I'm speaking English, and it's automatically translating it. Right. right? Well, I mean, you've got to imagine right, right that. Right to like, our ear, and then, we, and then there's no need for it. 
uh, with the all of the language processing that Siri is doing now at Apple and everything that's going through their servers, you've got to imagine in a couple of years they'll have some variation of that yes. going. And then Google's already doing some version. Of, they've got an app right now you can download for iPhone or Android devices where, like if I'm in, in Mexico, for instance, I can tell it I'm an English speaker in Mexico, and you I can have a slow conversation with the doctor, for instance, telling them what's wrong with me even if they don't speak my language and the phone will translate for the two of us. I can speak in English and the phone will speak out in Spanish or, or read it as text to the Spanish speaker yeah, and, and I vice think, versa. I think, that'll, I think that'll continue to evolve. To where it's uh, all but instantaneous? Yes. It's just an earpiece attached to whatever uh, um, visual it's, you have on. It's the, the fucking babblefish from uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. That's exactly what yeah. Douglas Adams envisioned. Yeah, no, I think you're spot on there, too. And we're not far away from that as it is. I feel pretty good about these predictions. Me too, man. I, like, you You talk about a, being a curmudgeon, and you are a little bit of a... You are a curmudgeon in practice, in, in actuality, like... In, <laughs> doesn't that just make you? What, what is that? Doesn't that just make you a curmudgeon? I mean, right here. Though, Actually, you're a curmudgeon. No, well, I mean, in the moment, you're you're grumble, grumble, grumble. But in general, you are a, like you have a positive outlook on society and the world and the future. Like you're generally an optimistic. No, I dude. don't. No, I don't. I don't have a positive outlook on the world. I don't think people are generally good, and that's why I work so hard to that end. For example, uh, Roosevelt FDR has a quote uh, that reads something like. I can't fucking remember the quote. But anyway, what it, what it basically says is people are generally good until it's their self-interest on the line. Uh, yeah, it's something about virtue dies. At yes. The hands, virtue is sacrificed at the hands of self-interest or something yeah, like that. Yeah, just like all rivers go to the ocean. Uh, yes, yes. All virtues die in the sea of, of self-interest just as all rivers end in the ocean. Something, something like, like that. that. It's yeah. vague. I mean, I'm sure we're, I'm almost positive we're wrong on this actual quote, but generally that's, that's what it says is we are good people. As long as it, as it doesn't conflict with our self interest. Yes, we're good as long as it is. It, as long as it it's benefits us. us to be yeah. good. Yeah, I mean, and that's the and I believe, dude, I, I I hardcore at 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 the core of me, I believe that. But then, in the broader sense of the universe, you believe in in the threefold rule, in that you reap what you sow, and so you believe and act generally that doing good gets you good mostly. Just as in the fact that you don't hedge your bets with God. You either really believe or you don't. You can't just say you believe just in case. But in this in this instance, I disagree with you, though, because whether whether you think it is worthwhile in and of itself to do good things for people, you go around doing good things for people because you believe that that will in the long term be good for you. Exactly. I'm doing good. Because I believe it's good for me to do that. <laughs> but that's what I'm telling you is uh, everybody else calls that organized religion. Other guy, that's like, that's the only reason they're doing it too. The only reason that almost anybody does anything good is because they believe that that's going to get them in heaven. And now we can build extrapolations and fancy ways of saying that or more loose ways and not so defined and literal interpretations of, of the religious path. But in the end, the reason why anyone does anything good is because they think it is going to be good for them. Yes, but Whether you, that's about rejoining the oneness of God. You, on the other hand, you believe people are, inher- like, they are, are inherently good. They're, people are, are good. I and think outside at their core, things fuck them up. But the, this is a very complex conversation. I don't know that's the way to end the show, but we're recording it anyway, and then I'll just I'll figure out what it is afterwards. You and I get to pretty much the same place, and it's because of this. You think the way that the universe's rules are set up is that when you do good, you get good back. So you do good because that's the universe's rules. I think that that is the universe's rules and it's coded in the middle of every one of us. And if we are ourselves, if we just exist, if we just be, if we quit being other than what we are meant to be, then we will work right alongside each other pretty well and we will all be good. We we cruft it up because the world's such a fucked up place and we do such terrible things to each other that we make it too hard for ourselves to just be ourselves. We get caught up in other things and other ideas and whatever and we do bad things to one another. I don't think we want to be that way naturally. I feel like naturally that's exactly what I, th- I feel like naturally if it's if we're if it's left up to us and, and the strong rule and the strong survive and fuck everything else, 
that we would all just rape and pillage. There's a whole lot of human history that back you up on that other guy. <laughs> and that's that's what I believe people are at the core. We just have found new things to rape and pillage, mostly Mother Earth. <laughs> We've been doing that a long time, too. We've been doing that a long time, too. All right, let's sign off this motherfucker. Um... What a weird show. Yeah, it went, it went some places. We went <laughs> we went far afield, <laughs> over the river and to the woods, one might say. Uh, over the river and through the woods, I guess. Yeah, that's the song, isn't it? Yeah, anyway. Until next week, I'm one guy. And I'm the other. <laughs> and this has been the podcast. <laughs>